Good morning students. This is Joy Vargas from Uncovering Chemistry. Today we are going to discuss unit 1 in our video 1. Some basic concept of chemistry. Clear? Now introduction of this chapter will be there. In that you will come to know uh, what is chemistry. Now till now you must have studied have very de various definitions regarding chemistry. But today you will come to know the real definition what we say. Then we are going to discuss the importance of chemistry huh? the, in the field of science, in the field of medicine, in the field of technology, many things, industries and all we are going to discuss today. Then nature of matter we are going to discuss and then states of matter. Right? Like this, uh, many things we are going to discuss in this chapter. It's a basic, uh, what we call concept of chemistry, what we are talking about and various things you will come to know which will be helpful in understanding previous what you call the next chapters what we call is it clear so we will start with this but first of all we will say what is introduction when we say so we will go through the introduction first and then we will go through what is chemistry what we say okay next okay when we talk about this in this introduction part science can be what we say viewed as a continuing human effort to systematize the knowledge for describing and understanding nature, right? This is the use of science, what we say. You have learnt in your previous classes that when we come, you have learned in your previous class that when we come across diverse substance present in nature and change in them in daily life, right? Now, in this case, when we say, suppose, curd formation from milk, what we say, right, due to lactobacillus bacteria huh? and which acid is there in curd, so we say lactic acid huh? and which sugar is there in milk, so we can call lactose is the sugar in milk. Then formation of vinegar from sugar cane juice huh? on keeping for a prolonged time. Uh, means if you keep in a what you call sugar cane juice, uh, shedding or us what we call, for a long time it will change into vinegar. Huh? There are two types of vinegar, white vinegar and brown or black vinegar. That, that black vinegar is made from sugar cane juice. Now, rusting of iron that everyone know are some of the example of changes which we come across many times. For the sake of convenience, science is subdivided into various disciplines that is chemistry, physics, biology and geology, right? So, these are the four branches of science what we call, right? Now, the branch of science that studies the preparation, properties, structures and reaction. Now, this is very good, see. Preparation, properties, huh? then structures, then reaction of material, substances is called chemistry. So, this one also you can write as a definition of chemistry or we say now, what is chemistry if anyone asks? So, here is the term given very nicely by Roald Hoffman. What is written here? Chemistry is the science of molecules and their transformation means from uh, different state. No? It is the science not so much of 100 elements that is now today 119 elements we know in the periodic table. Right? But of infinite variety means it is not only of 100 elements but of infinite variety of molecules that may be built from them. Means what? Now periodic table I will take suppose hydrogen and oxygen you say. Right? So hydrogen with hydrogen oxygen I make water also you can make. Right? You can make hydrogen peroxide also. Huh? Like this now suppose another one compound you take you can make CH4 from this what you say with the carbon what you say. You can make glucose also C6, H, H12, O6 like this. Right? So from this 119 elements, you can make many of what we call the molecules, what we say. Understood? So, that is chemistry, what we say. Not, it is, a, many times we ask anyone, what is chemistry? So, many of the students say chemistry means a study of chemicals. But actually, this is the definition given by Roald Hoffman. It's a science of molecules and their transformation. Okay? And the second definition we have seen in this last three lines. So, these are the two definitions what you have to remember. Now, the third topic that is the importance of chemistry what we are going to see. Clear? Next. So, this is you can see the third topic which we are going to discuss that is importance of chemistry. Okay? Topic 1.1 uh, on page number 4 in your textbook. Okay? Now, see. Okay. Now, here when we say importance of chemistry, you can see here, chemistry plays a central role in science and is often intertwined, what you are, 
Huh? Intertwine means tangle with other branches of science. Means it is mixed with other branches of science also to understand the concept. Principle of chemistry are applicable in diverse areas such as weather pattern. Means now suppose if rainy season is going on, huh? Well, what? Well, it will be heavy rain, less rain, cloudy, whatever things weather pattern can be understood by principles of chemistry. What we say. Functioning of brain also can be understood and operation of a computer, right? This also can be understood at micro level. Then production in chemical industries, what we say, chemicals made in this chemical industries, manufacturing, fertilizer, everyone know, fertilizer, three main things, what are they? N, P and K, that is nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are the three key sources, what we say in fertilizer, what we say is that alkalis, huh? Acids we make, salts are we make, dyes, polymers, drugs, soap, detergents, metal, alloys, etc. Including new material. Means for all these principles of chemistry are applicable. We can apply the knowledge of chemistry for making all these things. Okay, then chemistry you can see contributes in a big way to national economy. Means you can uh, get nice in a amount of money also through chemistry what you say then it helps in national economy also it also plays an important role in meeting human needs for food huh? by making fertilizer and growing more food then healthcare products medicines what we say and other materials aimed at improving the quality of life this is exemplified by the large scale production of variety of fertilizer means for food if you want to increase large scale fertilizer has to be produced what we say improved variety of pesticide insecticide to kill pest and insect what we say then chemistry provide a method for the isolation of life saving drug for natural sources from natural sources and life saving drug this is very important on life saving drugs from natural sources and make possible synthesis of such drugs means synthesis means making of this drug what you say right now some of these drugs are this you have to remember huh? cisplatin and taxol which are effective in cancer therapy so this is asked for vsq which drug is used for cancer therapy and all okay now the next the drug is a DAZ means azithromycine. Azithromycine, what you call? Huh? This is used for helping AIDS patient, right? So this also can be asked for what you call VSQ. Very short question. Huh? Which drug is used for AIDS patient? Then, then you can see chemistry contribute to a large extent in the development and growth of what nation with a better understanding of chemical principle it is now it has now become possible to design and synthesize new material having specific magnetic electric and optical properties right this you will study in your further studies what we say huh? then this has led to optical properties when we say uh, i think it will come in 12th what we say in stereo chemistry we will be discussing about this then this has led to the production of superconducting ceramics. Huh? Now this also will come in physics, but superconducting phase of ceramics, that is the contribution of chemistry, what we say. Conducting polymers, huh? conducting polymers means the one which conduct electricity and heat, then optical fibers. Now the, for this, uh, what we call, the data is being sent, internet what we use now, huh? most probably optical fibers are used nowadays, then etc. Chemistry has helped in establishing industries which manufacture utility goods like acids, alkalis, dyes. Dyes means color, mixture of two or more than two colors. Huh? Then polymers, it is polymer, polymers, then metals, etc. These industries contribute in the big way to the economy of the nation and generate employment. Mean it gives employment to many people, huh? chemical industries and all that we say. Now, in recent years, chemistry has helped in dealing with some of the pressing aspect of environmental degradation with a fair degree of success. Safer alternative to environment hazard, hazardous, environmentally hazardous refrigerant like CFC, chlorofluorocarbon, it depletes the ozone layer, right? So now this, instead of this responsible for ozone depletion in the stratosphere have been successfully, huh? now what is it? See has been successfully synthesized and however many big environmental problems continue to be matter of grave concern what we say to the chemist great it is now one such problem is the management of the greenhouse gases huh? like methane carbon dioxide these are all the greenhouse gases understanding of biochemical process uses of enzyme for large scale production of chemicals huh? now when we say enzyme now enzymes are biocatalysts huh? so they speed up the reaction so most of the reaction now catalyst are used so less energy less time and fast production will be there and synthesis of new exotic material are some of the intellectual challenges for the future generation of chemists 
Now, a developing country like India needs talented and creative chemists for accepting such challenges. And to be a good chemist, to accept such, what we say, what is the word? Such challenges, one need to understand the basic concept of chemistry. That's why we are studying this chapter, clear? Because in future, you can also be a good chemist, huh? the intelligent chemist, what we say, which begins with the concept of matter, right? Now, let us start with the nature of matter. Now, when we say this is the next topic of our chapter, what we say, that is 1.2 topic. Nature of matter. Now, you are already familiar with the term matter huh? from the earlier classes. Now, this is the definition of matter. What is that? Anything that has mass and occupies space is called matter. So, this is the definition. This is the third definition what we are going in this, going through in the chapter. Okay. Then, everything around us, for an example, book, pen, pencil, water, air, all living beings, etc. are composed of matter. You know that they have mass and they occupy space. Now, let us recall the characteristic of states of matter, which we have learned in previous classes, right? So, now states of matter, I think everyone know the three states of matter, which are the solid, liquid and gas, right? Now, you are aware with the matter that exists in three physical states, now which is the solid, liquid and gas. The constituent particle of matter in these three states can be represented as showed in figure 1.1. Now, what is that figure? I will show it to you just a minute. Okay. This is the figure 1.1 what you are talking about. Solid, the molecules are uh, closely packed, liquid, loosely packed and gaseous, maximum intermolecular distance what we say. Right? Now, this properties we will go through this. Okay? Now, just see. Okay. Now, the constituent particle of matter in this figure what we have seen, particles are held very close to each other in Huh? hold close to each other, held close to each other or in solid and in orderly fashion and this is not much freedom of movement, right? Mo movement is less because they are closely packed what we say. Now in liquid the particles are close to each other but they can move around. In liquid they can move around. Huh? This is one property. How in gases the particles are far apart as compared to those present in solid and liquid and their movement is uh, easy and fast. Maximum movement is seen in gaseous molecule. Now because of such arrangement of different particles, different states of matter exhibit the following characteristic means the characteristic of solid liquid and gas we are going to study so you can see here solid have definite volume and definite mass shape what we call right liquid have definite volume but do not have definite shape they take the shape of the contain which they are placed now this we have already studied in the lower classes right you can underline this also now the next part of gas now, gases have neither definite volume nor definite shape. Now, this is neither definite volume nor definite shape. They completely occupy the space in the container in which they are placed. I think this characteristic also we are knowing. Now, these three states of matter are interconvertible convertible by changing the conditions of the temperature and pressure. Means if you heat the solid, it will change into liquid. If you heat the liquid, it change into gas. If you cool the gas, it will change into liquid. And if you cool the liquid, it will change into solid, right? So, interconvertible states what we say now. On heating, a solid usually changes to liquid and the liquid on further heating changes to gas or vapor. In the reverse process, a gas on cooling liquefies to liquid and the liquid on further cooling freezes to solid. Okay. So, here we come to an end of our topic that what we have discussed, three topics. Next time we will be discussing about classification of matter, right, in our next video. Okay. So, we will stop here. Next time we will continue with classification of matter. Okay. Thank you.